Greetings, and thank you for your interest in the C, C++, or Java programming class I am teaching. Class starts Monday, August 31st, and ends on Thursday, December 17th. Both classes are totally online. There are no on-campus meetings and only one required Zoom meeting. I am sending out the same information, so if you are in both of my classes, or if you have taken an online class from me before, you only need to look at it once. There are a few important things I want to cover before the class starts. What the classes cover, who should take the class, and just as important, who should not take the class, the workload for each class, information about me and why I am teaching, accessing the course on Canvas, computer and software requirements, and the textbook, and links to the syllabus. These classes provide an introduction to either C and C++ or Java. We start with data types control structures such as the if, the else if, and case statements, for and while loops, and how they specifically work in these languages. After the basics, you will learn how to use functions, subroutines, and other methods, arrays, character and string manipulations, pointers and or references, accessing files on the disk, and an introduction to object-oriented programming. The Java class also covers creating graphical user interfaces, known as GUI, that run in a window environment. There is a lot of information to learn in these classes, and they transfer directly to computer science and computer engineering programs at many universities. This is the class you should take, and it will benefit you greatly if you plan to transfer to a university computer science or computer engineering program. By completing this class and learning the information covered, you will be prepared to succeed. This is the class you should take if you want to know more about C, C++, or Java. This is the class you want to take if you want to learn a new language and advance your career. This is the class you want to take if you want to know how programmers solve problems. I also realize that most of the people in this world have absolutely no desire to know the intricate details of programming. They just want to turn on the computer, select an application, and have it work. Some of the smartest people I know have absolutely no desire to become programmers. Good for them. Good for me, and good for you. Not everyone in the world needs to be a programmer. There are a lot of other important occupations also. One time, an athlete needed three more units to qualify for the team. That would have been fine when I was teaching the Introduction to Computer Information Systems course, but he ended up in my programming course. He contacted me after the first day and said, I am in the wrong class. Can you help me out? I was able to get him transferred into an appropriate class. If you find that you are in the wrong class, don't walk away. Run and do it before the drop date. I think of the CIS-41 Intro to Computer Information Systems as being similar to driver's ed. You learn the rules of the road, the different controls in a car, and how to work them successfully to drive down the road. You don't need to know whether you have a carburetor or fuel injection, the type of refrigerant for the air conditioner or coolant in the radiator. You don't need to know whether the voltage regulator is built into the alternator or is a separate device. You just want to drive. A programming course is much more like an auto shop class. You learn the details of the engine, brakes, cooling, electrical alignment, and maybe even how to customize the vehicle. In a programming class, you not only learn how the things work, but you learn how to customize things and create programs from scratch. As mentioned, there is a lot of material. The class is organized into 16 modules and presented online using Canvas. Title V of the Education Code defines a college unit as three hours of work per week. A three-unit on-campus class is typically three hours of lecture and six hours of homework per week. Three plus six equals nine hours per week. Since this class is online, everything is homework, all nine hours per week. You need to plan in spending those hours each week. Each module has a lecture and a textbook reading assignment, and usually a quiz. Modules typically have one or two programming assignments with lab reports and an opportunity for a class discussion. Try to spread it out over the week instead of trying to rush things and do all nine hours in one day. I realize that people have other things in their lives besides this class. 
Try to plan your coursework so that it fits into your life. If you have vacation plans or your schedule is full with other important obligations, you may want to consider enrolling in the course at another time. The last thing I want to do is discourage anyone from taking the class, but I want you to be successful and prepared for transfer if that is your goal. I will make myself available to help if you are having a difficult time with a programming project. You have my personal support. That is a promise. Although I took a few programming classes in college, my degree is in electronics engineering technology. I spent several years designing various pieces of hardware for computer systems. When the hardware design was completed on one project and they needed programmers, I became a software engineer instead of a hardware engineer. Most of my early projects were done in assembly language on several different types of computers. Other projects were done in high-level languages such as PL1, Pascal, C, C++, Java, Fortran, and a little Swift. I've been on projects with over 100 programmers, some with only three programmers, and other projects where I was the only programmer. I've networked multiple computers together, controlled lasers, worked on automotive test equipment, medical equipment, video games, written hardware diagnostics, device drivers, and more. I've programmed multi-million dollar computer systems where the computer took up a whole floor and microcomputers smaller than a thumbnail priced at only a few dollars. When the opportunity came to be a teacher, I jumped at the chance to share my passion and experience. I want to share that enthusiasm with you. Once you are registered for the class and the class has started, you gain access to course materials on Canvas. You can connect to Canvas at sjcc.instructure.com. Your login ID is the same as the My Web system used to register for the class. However, the password will be different until the IT department integrates Canvas login into the rest of the systems. When you first get access to Canvas, click Activate slash Reset Password. You need to use a computer with internet access to complete and submit materials and assignments. You need a computer on which you can install either a C, C++ development system or a Java development system depending on which class you are taking. You can start doing lab projects immediately using only a web browser that connects to an online compiler for the first few weeks until you get a full functioning development system installed. I am recommending jdoodle.com as the online compiler for either course. The college has a limited number of laptops available to loan students who do not have access to their own computers. An email should be arriving in your inbox that describes the requirements for a loaner computer and the form to be filled out to request a device. The software required for the course cannot be installed on a Chromebook running Google's Chrome OS. I have contacted the IT department at the college to see what must be done to get the extra software installed links to the equipment loan request form, e textbook loaner program, and other useful information are located in the middle of the page at sjcc.edu slash current dash students. The textbook for the Java programming class can be downloaded free from the internet. The recommended textbook for the C++ C++ programming class is not free. It is recommended but not required. Grants may be available for some students to obtain the C++ C++ textbook. The library may have electronic copies available for loan. You should receive more information about these possibilities from the college. Here are the textbooks. CIS 54-102, C C++ Programming, C How to Program 10th Edition by Dital, Prentice Hall, and the ISBN is uh, 978-0-13-444823-7 for the CIS 84-102 Java programming class Introduction to Programming Using Java 8th Edition by David J. Eck available free at math.hws.edu slash javanotes8 slash 
Links to the Equipment Loan Request Form, e-textbook loaner program, and other useful information are located in the middle of the page at sjcc.edu slash current-students. I have not finalized the organization or course content of the classes. However, you can get a preliminary copy of the syllabus through the links. The syllabus for each class will be finalized before the first day of class. The C++ C++ programming syllabus is at program-info.net slash capital C++ slash 54GRN capital F20 dot htm. The Java programming syllabus is at program-info.net slash capital J-A-V-A slash 84GRN capital F20 dot htm. Pay close attention to the capitalization on the link addresses. Stay healthy. Stay active. Don't forget about the other side of your brain. Take an art class or music or PE. Get involved in your community. Be more than just a programmer. Once again, a great big welcome to the class. I really, really enjoy programming and I enjoy teaching. I look forward to working with you during the class and hope the class will not only be enjoyable, but also educational and intellectually challenging. You can reach me by email at dan.mcelroy at sjcc.edu. Bye for now.